It's a quiet Saturday afternoon at the Archers. Peace reigns. But that doesn't mean that nobody's busy. Mrs. Archer is catching up on her sewing. Mr. Archer, being a lawyer, spends most of his time sitting at a desk. So he's pretty easy on his socks. <laughs> well, I guess he spends a lot of time pacing up and down in front of the jury. <laughs> this is no day off for Mr. Archer. He's brought home a pile of work. Like most every man, he may have a desk that looks messy. But he knows exactly where everything is. And he can put his finger on any paper he wants immediately. I wonder where Corliss is on this quiet afternoon. Sure, just a minute. It's Mary, she wants to talk to you. Now, look, I have to make a very important call long distance. Hi, Mary. No. Really? Mary's found a place where we can have our curtains cleaned for half price. Oh, goody. Now can I make... <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Mary. Give me that number again. Elm 3331. Remember that, will you, dear? Elm 3331. One. Really? They come and take the curtains down and put them back up again at no extra cost. Well, every business has its ups and downs. Look, <laughs> darling. Please. Harry has to make a business call. I'll call you later. Thanks a million. Bye. Our curtains do need cleaning, and if we have these people come, what's the matter? I've forgotten the number that I have to call in Pittsburgh. <laughs> so my dad. Hi, Mr. Archer. Dexter, don't you have a phone at your house? Yeah, but I couldn't get to it. My mother was on the line. Yeah, but, she was, <laughs> yeah, but if she was talking to Mrs. Archer, then this line couldn't possibly be clear before your line was... Oh, hi, Frank. Dex. Now, listen, about the debate. Yeah, yeah, you want to take the rest of the opening speech now? I've got to make that call. I promised Mr. Sheldon I'd... Call? I've got to call those curtain people. What was that number? Uh, Elm 3331. Elm 3331. Have you got a pencil? No. Elm 3331. Well, now, let me call Mr. Sheldon first. I've got to talk to him before Mr. Halley gets Elm. here. Who's Mr. Halley? Well, Halley represents the other side in this case. Elm. What was that number again? Elm 3331. You know, it's just possible that my call is more important than Dexter's. <laughs> oh, yes, this is a big deal. And if he's going to marry my daughter, doesn't he want her to be a rich man's child? What are you going to do? Psychological warfare. We're trying to come out the debate. Yeah, listen, I'll give you the opening now, okay? Got a pencil? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, and honored... <laughs> Hi, Frank. Uh, I gotta run along now, Mr. Archer. Thanks for the phone. Uh, I'm glad you didn't have to use it. <laughs> oh, Corliss, please, don't vacuum now. I have to make a very important call. Golly, Daddy, haven't you made that call yet? Yeah. <laughs> long distance. Not long distance. This is Maple 8067. I want to make a person-to-person -person call to Mr. John Sheldon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The number is... The number is... 
The number is Elm 3331. Where did Dexter went? I haven't the slightest idea. Golly, Mom, aren't men mysterious? Mysterious? Well, they're different. They're not normal. Oh, dear, what is normal? Women. Yes? The Pittsburgh circuits are all busy now. I'll call you in a few minutes. Thank you, Operator. Couldn't you reach Mr. Sheldon? Circuits are all busy. Daddy. Yeah? Don't you think men and women are different? So I understand, Corliss. Maybe that's next to me. No! It's my long distance call. Oh. Yes, operator. Hello, Mr. Archie. This is Millie. Gosh, I'm surprised to find you home. I'm very talk to Mr. Sheldon before Mr. Halley gets here. The operator's probably been trying to reach me. All right, Dad. <laughs> the telephone is an amazing invention. It can be both a convenience and an aggravation. Actually, the only other invention that can be both more convenient and more aggravating is woman. Is that guy going to call you soon, Mr. Sheldon? I'm pretty sure he will. It's important. Hope you don't mind my giving him this number. I'm a busy man. We've got to crowd things in. i got to get out of here. I don't usually hang around on Saturday afternoon. I got a date. <laughs> What's funny about it? I got a date? It's not the date. You're, you're tickling me. <laughs> what I think about that gal? Oh. You really love her, huh? Love her? Are you kidding? <laughs> What's your hurry, then? If I'm late for a date, she'll beat my brains out. I gotta catch a train this afternoon, and if I'm late for that on account of Archer's not phoning me, I'll beat his brains out. <laughs> A man waiting for a telephone to ring is like an old maid waiting for the wedding bell to ring. Nothing is going to happen until somebody else wants the bell to ring, too. <laughs> that must be Mr. Halley now. I've never met the man. You know, this room doesn't look too presentable. Uh, dear, would you put these in the desk for me? And you might take off that apron. All right, Daddy. I thought somebody was at the door. <laughs> I mean, I thought somebody else was at the door. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. Dexter has a pie in his hand. Keep your eye on it, and guess what's going to happen to it. Hiya, Mrs. Archer. Hiya, Corliss. You got them. Yep. I have some questions to ask, but first, Dexter, may I suggest that if you're not going to eat that pie at this time, perhaps I'd better hold it? Oh, okay, Mr. Archer, but why? Well, Mrs. Archer is planning on having the curtains clean, not the rug. Oh, I bet you think I might drop it. Well, don't worry, I'm as sure hand as a juggler. Watch that pie now, folks. This may be it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Archer, you can hold it. Thank you. I'll get the table. Oh, now the questions. Are we planning an indoor picnic? No, no, Mr. Archer, we're not going to eat these things. They're just here to illustrate the difference between a watermelon and a piece of lemon pie. Well, that's English. Must mean something. <laughs> it's a surprise. What is the surprise, dear? You'll see in a minute, Mom. Now then, Daddy, if you'll sit down, we'll tell you the surprise. Hey. All right, Corliss, you have the floor. Putting the pie on the table? Next to Dexter? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dexter Franklin and Corliss Archer have been chosen as a debating team to represent their school in the Interest City Debating Contest. Well, that's wonderful. 
Mister, stop applauding. You're out of work. I am? That's funny. I was working okay when I came in here. <laughs> <laughs> the subject of our debate is, are people eating too much? I shall uphold the negative. But first, Mr. Franklin for the positive. <clears throat> are people eating too much? I say yes. <laughs> Gestures. Oh, oh, yeah. Are people eating too much? I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> this pie will not be squashed in my living room. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. We know different, don't we, folks? Go ahead, Dexter. People don't know how to count calories. Why, there are more calories in a tiny piece of lemon pie than there are in this huge watermelon. <laughs> Daddy, are you all right? <coughs> You're not hurt, are you, Harry? Gosh, Mr. Archer, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. Oh. I... There's my coal. Now, uh, here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, something's got to happen with that pie. Soon. Is that ready? On your call to Pittsburgh, I'm afraid you gave us a wrong number. There is no such exchange. Well, uh, I'll check. I, I have it here somewhere. Call me when the debate resumes. All right, Mom. Hey, I got a great idea. <laughs> We can use this to demonstrate what calories do to the human stomach. This can show what the stomach looks like when it's empty, and this is what happens when you overeat. <laughs> Turn it off! Turn it off! Did I do something? You inhaled Mr. Sheldon. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you swept up his phone number. Oh, golly. See if you can find it. Uh, yes, Mr. Archer. Uh, I'm sorry, operator. Uh, I'm getting the number. Feels like cold oatmeal. <laughs> find the jokes. Find the number. Well, it must still be in here. Maybe we can blow it out. <laughs> Great. It's the only place I have the number written. Golly, Daddy, what are you going to do? Well, I'll, I'll have the operator call his home. Maybe they know where he is. Hey, that's pretty quick thinking, Mr. Archer. Yes, sir, as Jonah said when the whale deposited him on the beach, you can't keep a good man down. It's <laughs> enough. Now, get that vacuum out of here before it does any more damage! <laughs> Hello, operator. Terribly sorry, I uh, wasn't able to find the number, but I wonder if you call Mr. Sheldon at his home. Operator. 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 I... Operator. Back to meet Corliss Archer. I'm gonna count three and that phone better ring. One, two, <laughs> Hello? It's for you. Hello. Oh, hi, babe. I'm sorry, babe, but I'm tired of a customer. But if, but if, but if, but, but, but. Try but if again. Please, Mike, don't tie up that line. I gotta get that call. Listen, babe, I... All right, babe. Yes, babe. Yes. 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 Oh, stop arguing with her and get off that phone. Listen, babe, right over. Ah, uh, uh, I'll go on. I'll go ahead. Be a sport. I'll go on. Go ahead. What's the matter? The operator wants to put in another dime. Listen, babe, I'll be over there as soon as I can. I hope that guy calls soon, Mr. Sheldon. I'm getting nervous. So am I. Give me another massage. You already had three. 
Make it four. If that guy don't call soon, I'm gonna get my boat legs broken by the sweetest little girl in the whole wide world. <laughs> it would be a pity if that non-ringing telephone broke up that love affair. And what a beautiful love affair that is. It's about as romantic as anything I've heard of since the night Romeo found out there was enough room on that balcony for him, too. <laughs> I'm going down to the drugstore. I'll put my call through from there. Why don't you go over next door and use our phone? That's a good idea, Harry. No, I want a phone that I can call my own. Besides, <laughs> the drugstore, I'll have my choice of headache remedies. If Mr. Halley gets here, tell him to come down to the drugstore. Yes, Daddy. I'll go over next door and call the telephone company and have them come out and fix the phone. I'll do it, Mom. It's all right, dear. I want to talk to Mary anyway. You work on your debate. All right, Mom. Golly, we didn't get in much practice on the debate. Well, it's going to be easy to prove that fat people eat too much, but we also have to prove that thin people do, too. Yeah. Hey, maybe we can show that thin people overeat because they overeat things like watermelon that don't show. That's not a bad idea. See if you can develop the argument. I'm Mr. Halley. I believe Mr. Arch is expecting me. Oh, yes, Mr. Halley. Daddy said for me to tell oh, you... I'm pleased to you as a friend. And as a friend, I must say, you can't expect results if you don't cooperate. Does uh, that young man actually think that, that that watermelon is his friend? In a way, it is, Mr. Halley. You see, a lot depends on that watermelon. Mr. Halley, this is Dexter Franklin. Uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do? Would you care for a piece of watermelon? No, thank you. I hate to break up such a beautiful friendship. Oh, well, there's a piece of lemon pie around here someplace if you care for that. And yeah, Mr. Archer hid it. Mr. Archer hides pies? He didn't want it on the floor. Well, I wonder why not. Well, you see, the pie was here because Dexter was showing Daddy that a piece of pie is bigger than a watermelon. Hey! You know, you'd make a great argument for the other side, wouldn't you, Corliss? Yes, that's right. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better... Um, and would, you, would you just answer one thing before you go, Mr. Halley? It's really very important. What? Why do you overeat? Didn't? <laughs> but I, I, I don't. Golly, sure would be swell if you did. Yeah, Mr. Archer was trying to help out until I pulled the phone out of the wall. I see, and uh, just why did you pull the phone out of the wall? He thought it was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Well, I, I really must run along. You tell your father that I... Oh, golly, I forgot to tell you. Daddy's down at Schroeder's drugstore. He wants you to meet him there. <laughs> That's fine, fine. Maybe I can help him hide some pies. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Mr. Halley! Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Well, now that phone's responsible for Mr. Halley being tied up. Brother, what a day. All I can say is that if this mess could have been foreseen, I'm sure Alexander Graham never would have belled. Long distance. Operator, this is Harry Archer. On my person-to-person -person call to John Sheldon in Pittsburgh, the address is 837 Fairview Avenue. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I gave you the wrong number. Elm 3331 is where we get our curtains cleaned at half price. I, I want to speak to John F. Sheldon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Where will we find Mr. Sheldon? Well, if you try his home, perhaps they know where he is. Thank you. We'll try and locate Mr. Sheldon and call you. Thanks, operator. Thanks very much. Yes? Mr. Archer? Yes. What was that phone number where you get your curtains cleaned for half price? <laughs> Elm 3331. Thank you. We'll call you. Operator. They come and take your curtains down and bring them back and hang them up again at no extra charge. <laughs> Your father will be glad to know the phone is fixed. Be sure you tell him Mr. Halley is on his way down there. You know that Mr. Halley is off his rocker? Yes, he was sort of queer. Mr. Sheldon, what a time I've had trying to get you. Now, the papers are all here, ready to sign as soon as Halley gets here. He thinks I'm Mr. Sheldon. Hang on. No, you can't do that. Tell him you're the telephone company and there's trouble on the line. More trouble with the telephone? He'd blow a gasket. You can't just let him go on talking. And therefore, 
I do not think we ought to sign, Mr. Sheldon. Do you see? Yeah, but, but, Mr. Archer, but, 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 but. Oh, no. <laughs> is this who I think it is? Yes, sir. <laughs> Forgot to tell him about Mr. Holly. Call him back. Call him back? Yes. No. Why not? It would ruin our romance. Huh? I refuse to marry the daughter of a murderer. Especially when the murderee is me. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I... It's quite all right. My fault. Say. Yes? Oh, never mind. Uh, what I always say is you'll always be happier if you just go forward. Never look back. <laughs> I'll bet Mr. Archer and Mr. Halley are sorry the telephone was ever invented. As a matter of fact, right now I'll bet Mr. Archer and Mr. Halley are sorry they were ever invented. Corliss, where's Dexter? Daddy, Mr. Halley was here. Never mind, Mr. Halley, where's... <laughs> yes, Daddy. I told him to go down to the drugstore. Didn't you see him there? No. I better get back there. If my call comes through, tell the operator I'll be right back. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> Really, Dexter, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, hiding in the closet. The very idea. You ought to be ashamed. No, listen, Corliss. Yes? You wouldn't talk to me that way if you didn't know I was a coward. <laughs> Dexter is not really a coward. He's got plenty of stand up and fight. Unfortunately, at the moment, it seems to have stood up and... Look where you're going. Likewise, I'm sure. Hmm. Boy, I've been looking at this watermelon for hours. I'll go nuts if I don't get a bite out of it. No, Dexter. Huh? I'll get it. Oh, hiya, Mr. Halley. Come on in. No, thank you. Where's Mr. Archer? He just went back to the drugstore. Where were you? When? When he was there. Here? You better go there. While he comes here? Huh? <laughs> I've had enough of this ring around a rosy. Tell him a deal's off. What? <laughs> Boy, nothing's going right today. For your father, or for Mr. Halley, or the debate, or... The debate? Holy cow. I promised I'd call Frank and give him the rest of that speech for the school paper. <clears throat> oh, hi, Frank. Dex, listen, you want to take the rest of the speech now? Okay, listen. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta get the papers. No wonder this phone gets out of order. <laughs> what are you looking for? The second page of my page. Hello? Ready with Mr. Archer's call to Pittsburgh. Oh, golly. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Maybe he's coming now. Okay, Frank, listen. Does your scale groan with anguish every time you step on it? somewhere besides in your automobile? <laughs> Look at your waistline. Is it bulging? If so, I say to you, you're eating too much. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Sheldon, this is Harry Archer. What? Archer, I don't know what's going on there, but listen. Have you signed those papers yet? No? Good. You've saved me a lot of money. The whole picture has changed since I spoke to you last. You'll get a bonus for this, Archer. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks very much, Mr. Shelton. Now, let me speak to that other fellow. I don't know what other fellow. The other fellow, the one I was talking to when you got on the line. I want to hear the rest of what he had to say. Dexter. 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 <laughs> Mr. Archer, please, please. I'm too young to die. Too young. Too beautiful. I... <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Sheldon. <laughs> Peace. It is wonderful. 
Well, all's well that ends well. Boy, I've sure had a tough day today. I think I finally deserve a piece of this watermelon. You certainly do. No, Dexter. Huh? No, we need this watermelon for our debate. I'll take it, and I'll hide it. You and your appetite. <laughs> oh, Corliss, can I have a tiny little piece? No, Dexter, there's no second. <laughs> the service is kind of sloppy, but the food is wonderful. <laughs> 